Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to From Corporate to Creative with your host, Kelly Gallia. Our show is designed to help you make the leap from corporate to creative, and if you're already in the creative business, we'll help inspire you to create success on your terms. Each episode, we'll focus on topics to help creative professionals like you to express your creativity, pursue your passions, and find freedom, flexibility, and fun in your own creative business. Thanks for joining us. Kelly Gallia, and I'm so happy to welcome you to today's episode. If you're seeking a catalyst for change, you're going to love today's guest, productivity and organizational coach Paris Love. Paris really inspires and motivates entrepreneurs and business owners by coaching and consulting with them on time management, business building strategies, organization, and rejuvenating their quality of life. These are all wonderful things, and she knows how to help us with them. And her goal is to really maximize her client's productivity and support them in preparing for a better tomorrow. Now, as a college professor and ex-military sergeant, yes, you heard that correctly, Paris's energy is quite contagious, as you'll soon discover, and she really ignites a fire under you so you're able to live out your life's purpose. And Paris's motto, excuses are not an option, nor is failure. So Paris has written articles for and has also been featured in numerous publications, including NAPO News, and NAPO is the National Association for Professional Organizers, Hope for Women Magazine, Star Lee Magazine, San Diego Statement, Natural Awakening Magazine, Organizing from A to Z, Baldwin Parent, Brown Skin Magazine, Online Organizing, and Home Based Quarterly Magazine. Now, she's also a fellow expert writer for e Articles and has been interviewed and featured on several radio and television shows, as well as has, she's also been the organizing expert for IKEA in Atlanta. So one more thing I'd like to mention before we do welcome Paris to the show. If you'd like to check out her latest books, which are Growing Pains, Growing Pains, and 50 Tips to Get You Organized in 10 Minutes or Less, Hop on over to Amazon.com, look her name up, and you can find those books there. Okay, Paris, so we are ready for you to light a fire under us and be our catalyst for change. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Callie. It's good to be here. Excellent. So tell us, how do we know if we need a catalyst for change? Um, What are sort of some of the signs and symptoms that we might be experiencing that we know that we need your help? If you feel that you're always stressed, you're overwhelmed, you're like a little hamster in the wheel, always going but really never getting anywhere fast. If you put yourself up, put others in front of you, whereas you do for them rather than do for yourself, you're always taking care of other people and you're always on the back burner. That's some of the ways that you know I need help. I need someone to come in and really help me modify my life and what I'm doing. Excellent. So what sorts of things can happen? Let's talk about our two audiences here. We have people who want to make the leap from corporate employee to creative entrepreneur. Um, What are some of the things they might be experiencing besides feeling kind of stuck there? Um, What sort of symptoms could be happening with with that group? You know, and I used to work in corporate America, and if you don't get up every morning feeling energized and excited about going to work, and if you're feeling like, oh, my goodness, when is Friday ever coming? Like, oh, my God, <laughs> do I really have to go there? These might be signs that you need to change. Yeah, and it, sure. it happens to the best of us. Because, again, I was in corporate America, and I dread going to work. But now that I am an entrepreneur, I wake up every day with a smile on my face and a step at my step, and that's how it should be. <laughs> It absolutely should. Okay, so you're going to help inspire them to make that sort of change or at least recognize that. Um, Now, what about the group 
that is already in their own business. So we have creative entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, business owners. What are the some of the, what are some of the things that they could be experiencing their, in their business that indicate a need for change? Yeah. Yeah. Again, you're you're feeling you know stressed out, overwhelmed. You're working on the business or in the business, and you're just really frustrated. You're not really getting anywhere. And, again, you're not having that pep in your step. And sometimes you have to reinvent yourself, you know, do something different, you know, get get out there and experience something different. Maybe it's create a new product, uh, write an e-book, um, start speaking. You may have to do something different to re-energize yourself. Okay, and Paris, we've talked too in the past about the when people aren't organized and some of the things and the fallout that they can experience in their business, for example, losing money because they can't find their client's invoice or they're not keeping up with their accounts. Um, what are some other examples or, or ways that maybe someone can recognize that, that in themselves so they could reach out and get some assistance? Well, you, you, and you, I like how you bring that. They're, they're losing money because they lost the invoice. And if you lose the invoice, perhaps you may lose that client because the client is going to look at you and say, wow, what type of business are you running? Are you disorganized? I really don't want to do business with someone like that. So that makes you feel um, your self-worth is questioned. You don't feel worthy. Your self-esteem, your confidence level goes down. And you know, those are some of the some of the ways that you can know that. Uh oh, I need help. I really need to do something different because one, you're in business to make money, not lose money. And if you start losing clients, you don't want them to tell other people, "Don't do business with so and so because they're very disorganized." You know, you want oh, people right. to refer you to other companies and business and say, "Yes, do business with them. They're very organized. They invoice on time." You do their due diligence. Um, so these are the things that you want your clients to say about you. You don't want them to say, oh, my goodness, they're disorganized. They're really overwhelmed. They're taking on too much. So yeah. Those are some of the ways you can tell that I need help. Yeah, you want them to say, hey, they're really on it. They know what they're doing. That's Absolutely, yes. So... I know that most of the audience has probably seen the television shows where they bring in a professional organizer to help somebody in their home, but we're really focused here on business, and I think that's where sometimes people don't understand how an organizational consultant could help them. So why don't you tell us more about what it means to be an organizational and consultant and productivity coach, and maybe... Um, let everybody get the inside scoop on what the process is like working you. And, of course, everyone's a business owner concerned about the bottom line. They want to know how much will this cost. Uh -huh. <laughs> when I go in, whether it's a small business or a corporation, I evaluate. And sometimes I have to restructure the layout of the business, whether it's, again, home base or it's a corporate environment. I also look at their processes. How can we streamline some of their processes so they're more efficient? And we're looking at their bottom line so they're not losing money. So we want them to be more efficient, more productive. And oftentimes when I go in, the number one thing or number one reason why people call me is because of time management. Everyone says, I don't have time to. I have so much to do. I don't have time to return my client's phone call. I don't have time to meet someone for lunch. I don't have time to network. So we look at their time management. What can they delegate? How are they actually spending their time? Are there any time wasters? Another area that I find is paper management. Mm -hmm. I think paper and time kind of goes in hand. We say, I don't have time, so I'm going to put this to the side for later, and then all the paper, all the information piles up. Um, so those are really the key areas that I work with clients is time management and paper management. And how I work with individuals, whether they're in a company or home base, I go in either for a half a day or for a full day. And then we work on what's really causing them the most pain. Because oftentimes when clients call me, it's really about 
can I manage my time? Can I manage my team? How can I be more efficient? So we're going to work on those key areas so that they can be more efficient and they can produce more. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I know that um, <laughs> you and I have talked about this before, too, and I was sharing a little bit of my own story with you where I do time blocking, but I also am not realistic necessarily all the time with how much I can accomplish during those time blocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could you share a little bit about that process with us and what you would encourage a business owner to do or somebody looking to make the leap? Because, of course, they're working all day, right? And so there's only so much time to work on a new business when they're still in corporate America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, what I give my clients is, a, t a time schedule. So we look at what are you doing from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. And I always tell, and I do this myself, I never check email in the morning. Because if you check email in the morning, you're like, okay, i got to respond to this. And the next thing you know, it's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and you're like, what did I do? And you realize all you've done was check email. So I will schedule all time with my clients. Check email at a specific time. If you have to check it in the morning, check it for 15 minutes, and that's it. And then recheck it again at the end of the day. And, you know, turn off those little noises. Sometimes when we get an email or something comes in, we get the little beep. Turn those off because if you hear the beep, immediately you want to go, oh, what's that? I have to <laughs> look at this. I have to do this, and you don't. And delegate, you know, do you really have to read the email? Can you give it to an assistant? Can you, can you give it to someone else to read and to look through all the junk and the spam and only give you what you really need to pay attention to? And oftentimes we can dele delegate that, and we find maybe one, two, or three emails really need our attention, and the other emails someone else can respond and take care of that. So it's really looking at your day and what are you actually doing throughout the day. And you really have to schedule everything. And I will stress this, Kelly, schedule time for yourself. Make an appointment with yourself because we're all busy. And you don't want to get into that overwhelmed and stressed out um, feeling. So what you do, schedule time for yourself, whether it's a 10-minute walk, whether you go outside for lunch, whether they're staying inside. Even if it's a 10-minute a phone call to a friend, schedule time for you. That way you're not always doing, doing, doing. Excellent advice. That is so true. And that was uh, one of the changes that I made, too, is I had time for myself scheduled in, but not nearly enough, and I was getting depleted very quickly. So mm -hmm. listen up, everyone. Make you a priority. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you're not happy, no one's happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That is so true. Oh, one other tip I wanted to share, too. I, I saw somebody had posted this, and Paris, you probably do the same sort of thing. But, you know, as um, business owners and entrepreneurs, we're always in this information-seeking mode, and we start to subscribe to different email lists, and we get on more and more things. And really using a different email account for those subscriptions and making a decision, a commitment to yourself that you're only going to check that account maybe once or twice a week rather than every day. Right. Multiple times mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, oh, I would love to speak on that. And it's interesting because someone yesterday, they wanted to email me something. They're like, oh, I want to put you on my list. It's just your email, which was my business email. I go, oh, no, 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 no. I have a Hotmail account for that. And they said, Hotmail, that is so old-fashioned. I said, my Hotmail <laughs> account is where all the articles, all that information that one day I'm going to read, one day I'm going to look at, that goes there. And I, I check it once a day, and when I check it, I, I find that, hmm, okay, is this email really important? Am I really going to read this article? Because in our mind's eye, we think, let me put this in, let me create a folder, and I'm going to put all the Kelly stuff in here, and then I'm going to go back and read it. I'm going to put all the Paris stuff in here, and I'm going to read it. But guess what? We never go back to read it. <laughs> so if you have those folders, because there are, there are some information that you would say, okay, I'm going to go back and read. I'm going to look at that video. 
if you find that within three months or six months that you haven't gone back to that material or you haven't even thought about that material, go ahead and delete it because you're not going to go back to it. So I do have a separate email just for that, and I check it once a day, and if it's something that, you know, I'm not going to ever read, I immediately delete it. And don't be afraid to go through and start unsubscribing to people's lists. Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Of course, not to your list, though. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I had it. Interesting you said that. I I was coaching another organizer, and they said, oh, my goodness, I'm working with this client, and I sent my newsletter to them, and they unsubscribed. I can't believe it. I said, well, maybe her, and, you know, when someone unsubscribes from newsletter, you know, we feel really bad. And I said, well, let's think about it this way. You're actually working with her. So she's probably thinking, why do I need the tips and the suggestions when I have you here? Face to face, hands on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good point. So, mm-hmm. Paris, I'm sure we have some people listening in that are like, I know I need help. I am drowning here. I am that hamster on the wheel. I need some assistance. How can we get them in touch with you? And um, how can you help those uh, the members in our audience that would like to work with you? Um, every month I do offer um, a complimentary business strategy session. And so it's 30 minutes with me. You get to pick my brain for 30 minutes. Um, and to sign up for one of the sessions, you can go to my website. It's terraceloveinstitute.com backslash coaching. And okay, you can fill so the have... form there, and I would get it. And I will personally email you back. Excellent. Okay, so go to parisloveinstitute.com and then slash coaching. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, Paris, we talked earlier in the intro that you are a member of NAPO, the National Association of Professional Organizers. Now, Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to how you learned to be so organized and maybe for those people who are in corporate thinking of making the leap, maybe they'd like to be an organizer or an mm-hmm. organized consultant. So what advice would you give to them? You know, it's interesting. I've always been really organized, and even as a child, I was the one who would label the the seasons, um, <laughs> you know, alphabetize my books, and I made my bed up even as a child. So I've always been very organized, and as I grew older, um, I actually had someone say, you know you have obsessive compulsive disorder because it's not really normal to go to people's houses and organize and, you know, put their things up. And I thought, wow, my friends don't really mind. They actually enjoy when I come over. <laughs> and then I discovered the National Association of Professional Organizers, and I thought, oh, my goodness, there are other people just like me, and they get paid to do this. <laughs> Nice. I'm laughing because I relate, by the way. So, <laughs> so even whether you want to become a professional organizer or you're trying to make that tradition, transition, what do you love doing? What are you most passionate about? You know, what do you get up in the morning, like I mentioned earlier? You have a smile on your face and a step in your step. What is it that you truly, truly enjoy doing that you're very passionate about? You're so passionate about it that when you do it, you lose track of time. Yes. And, you know, look, there are other people out there just like you, and perhaps there's an association. Perhaps there's a, a fellow friend or coworker who has those similar traits, and you can do business together. You never know. So. Excellent. So we know that your office must be organized then, right? Absolutely, yes. I'm a firm believer in that. When people say, are you organized? I'm like, yes, I am extremely organized. Extreme. My, fam- my, my family, they love when I leave because they're like, okay, the warden is gone. We can kind of mess it up a little. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. I had to, you know, refrain from doing that in my friends and family's homes, too, and I thought I can do that in my own space, but... <laughs> 
have that at their places. They're like, oh, no, Kelly won't leave us leave something on the counter. I was like, no, I can't. I'm recovered now. You can leave whatever you want on the counter. That's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm trying to, to recover. And funny that you said that um, this past weekend a girlfriend came down and so my husband barbecued, and she had she had a turkey burger, and she had it in a paper plate on the kitchen counter. Where at nighttime, I completely, you know, clean the kitchen, nothing on the counter, the dishes are washed. And so I threw it out. And so the next morning she goes, oh, where's my burger? And well, we went out to eat two days prior, so I thought she meant her burger from the restaurant. I said, it's in the restaurant, it's in there. He said, no, my turkey burger that's on the counter. I said, oh, honey, I threw that out. I didn't think you wanted it. He said, I was coming back for it. I said, oh, around here, you got to move quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in a business context, though, it works great because Paris is the person you want because she's going to come in there and get things done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I even go to Target and, and organize a little dollar section and put you know, you have, have you, you know how you go to where the clothes aren't, you know, the sizes are wrong or someone put something where it didn't belong? I'm the one who puts it back. <laughs> okay, I hope they're paying you a commission for that. You deserve <laughs> something for your services. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so aside from being a good Samaritan in your community with things like those pairs, what sort of services do you provide and how can you help our audience? Um, I do provide the hands-on organizing where I come in and we work together to streamline those systems, to create uh, filing systems, to eliminate that clutter. So we, I do work hands-on, side-by-side with you. I can also coach you on the process. Um, so if I can't physically be there, I can coach you on either getting organized or perhaps making that transition if you want to um, become an organizer or you want to do a different career move. Okay, perfect. Now, maybe you can share with our audience where you are, but I know that you travel as well, so if you could talk a little bit about that too. Yes, I actually live on the beach. It's so much fun. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in um, Brush Shores, Orange Beach, Alabama, um, my business is licensed in the state of Alabama and Georgia, but I do have clients all over. My motto is half clutter will travel. So. <laughs> I like that. Have clutter will travel. Will travel, yeah. Super. And then you also, as you mentioned, coach virtually and can help somebody. Um, and as you had discussed previously, that's usually, what, like a half day or a full day virtual session? Well, um, usually the half day or full day is me working hands-on side-by-side with you. Okay. If we do a coaching session, then we would either do a 90-minute session or we would coach once a week for 60 minutes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. I think that will help people, especially those who are still in corporate and on a limited timeline as far as what they can do to get themselves organized. That gives mm-hmm. them a better sense of how they connect right. with you. Mm-hmm. So we know that we're organized. We can help others get organized. But how can we help inspire and assure individuals as, and business owners that they really can get organized? You know, oftentimes we try something and it doesn't work because perhaps, give you an example, you watch a TV show and you go, oh, my goodness, I love that product. I really want it. So you go and buy it because it's pretty, and you get it home and realize it's not functional. It's not working the way I thought it would be. So then our organizational skills kind of lapse, and we, we beat ourselves up and say, I can never, ever get organized but you can get organized. And when I work with clients, I always tell them, don't buy anything. We're going to use what we have. Let's look at what you're currently doing. What have you done in the past? What has worked in the past? I want to briefly tell you a story. I had a client who worked in a corporate environment, and instead of writing on a calendar using Outlook or paper calendar, he liked to write a schedule and index card. And he said he was very organized, they worked, he was efficient, he was a top salesperson in this industry. Mm-hmm. And then he 
did, he saw something, a little planner, decided to get that, and, of course, paid a lot of money for the planner, and the planner went unused. And he said, I really like using the index card. I said, so why don't we go back to the index card? You don't have to recreate the wheel. So you right. can get organized. Just look at what has worked in the past. And, you know, how can you modify that? You don't have to go get the next shiny thing that's out there. We, when I work with clients, I do what works for them. Like I mentioned earlier, yes, my house does look like something on the magazine. My office is very organized. I don't expect my client's home or their office to look like mine because that's my style. That's not theirs. I am so happy you made that distinction because I think that is one of the biggest misconceptions out there about working with an organizer. You're going to come in and put things where I can't find them. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> So everyone hear that. It's about what works for you, where you've been most successful in the past and getting systems in place and processes that really support you and the way that you live and the way that you work. Absolutely, absolutely. We don't have to recreate the wheel. We do what works for you. Wonderful. So we've already shared a lot of tips today, but do you have any other tips that you wanted to share with us, sort of your best tips for getting a small business owner organized? For the best tips that I can tell small business owners to get pen and paper out and write down your schedule, look at where you're spending your time. Are there any time wasters? Do you have time set aside for you? Do you have a specific time set aside to check email, to do social media, to write an article? And when you look at everything that you're doing, because some of us have a business, we may work full time, and we have a family, how do you incorporate all of that into your life? And what can you eliminate? What can you delegate? And don't be afraid to delegate. You, sometimes for an organizer, it was hard for me to delegate because I have to have that control. But once I said, you know, I need to let someone else do this, and I am so much happier, and I can attain so much more when I let someone else do that they're good at doing and something that I may not be good at doing. So really look at that schedule and look at how you're spending your time because it is so, so important. Right, and I know that, you know, a lot of times my clients have resistance around this too, and maybe there's a little bit of fear there, but it's really knowing the value of your time and delegating and outsourcing those things that don't match up with that time value. Um, mm -hmm. Housekeeping, for instance, right? You can find somebody yeah. relatively inexpensive to come in and clean your home, and that's going to free up uh, two to four hours of your time, I guess, depending on the size of your place and <laughs> the size of mm -hmm. your family and your mess. But, you know, that's time that you could be spending working on your business and doing things for yourself as well. Absolutely. Can, can I share something else with you when you brought that up? Please do. It's if you work in a corporate environment and you're thinking about transitioning and you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I can do it, I don't really have the time, I have a family, if you have children, why can't you get them to help out? For instance, to, to clean, to prepare a meal. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go in there and do like a 10-course meal, but they can prepare like the salad. They can make the table. They can put the dishes up after dinner. That way you're not doing that. And I think oftentimes when we struggle with getting organized, we weren't taught how to organize, how to manage our money, how to raise our families. And some people say, well, I don't want my kids having to, you know, set the table. I don't want them cleaning. But these are the skills that they need when they become adults. So right. you need to teach them while they're young. So let them put the groceries up. They're learning that skill set. Where do the groceries go? You know, if you have smaller kids, and you say, where's the ketchup? And they're just learning how to speak and identify things. You're teaching them how to do that at the same time. Right. Like and we're also, not, you know, we're also not taught to ask for support. So I think it's very important to ask for help and not assume others around you know you need that help so that you can focus and get organized. Mm -hmm. So, Paris, I just want to repeat again for people to get in touch with you. They can go to parisloveinstitute.com forward slash coaching, and they could request a complimentary business strategy session. Yes. Excellent. 
Okay, we only have about 30 seconds left. Paris, are there, is there a last uh, tip that you would like to share with us today? When in doubt, throw it out. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> love it. Keep a smile on your face and a pep in your step, step in everyone. Your step. Pursue what you're passionate about. Do what you love. And figure it all out. All the other stuff will fall into place. Absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks so much, Paris. It's been a really a, a really great pleasure today. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.